Happy Easter! My name is Sean Eubank. I'm the director for Evangelical Mission here in the Southeast Michigan Synod. And today I bring you greetings from your bishop, the Reverend Dr. Donald P. Chris, and the other members of his staff, Beth, Robin, Lauren, and myself. And together we serve the Southeast Michigan Synod, which is made up of over 100 congregations around basically the Metro Detroit area. Today I'm going to be sharing with you the sermon for the second Sunday of Easter. And this comes to you as a gift from your bishop, a gift to all the pastors, the vicars, the licensed lay ministers who are serving as the primary preachers in all of our congregations. Our bishop recognizes that despite the dizzying, amazing array of gifts that all these people bring, there's one thing that's incredibly true right now. And that is, in this time of global pandemic, our pastors may not be putting as many miles on their cars, but they are working harder than ever, trying constantly to figure out how to help us all be the body of Christ in this time that is unlike any other that we've ever faced together. And so in that spirit, I bring you this morning's gospel lesson from the Gospel of St. John. From John chapter 20, beginning at verse 19. On the evening of that first day of the week, that first Easter Sunday, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw that it was the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now, Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hands and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen, and yet have believed. This is the gospel of our Lord. Yep, Doubting Thomas Sunday. Even before I said the word doubting, you knew that that's what his name is. Over the centuries, he's just had the word doubting thrown in there on top of his name. But this morning I want to ask if he's doubting Thomas, who are the other champions of faith around him that he's compared to? Now, remember the rest of the Easter story. The women go to the tomb expecting to find a dead body, expecting to be able to do those rites of purification that they've been denied doing back when he was initially laid to rest. And when they got there, they found the tomb empty. Some ran and got Peter and John, who then ran to the tomb. And they too found it empty. And being the helpful guys they are, they just left. Well, then Mary, who stuck around, had the encounter with Jesus. And she went back to all those other disciples and said, I have seen the Lord. He is risen. Now, when she said this, Thomas apparently wasn't present. And he still wasn't present later that evening and the scriptures are silent. We don't know where he was. Maybe doubting Thomas was the only one of the bunch 
who had enough guts to be out and about in society. The rest were hiding, locked away. Fear was what governed them. But into that, that locked away place, ruled by fear, Jesus comes. And an incredibly short sermon. Peace be with you. Well, then the room must have evolved into chaos. And John's gospel is very clear. To all these pillars of faith, what does Jesus do? He shows them his hands and his side. And only then is he able to sort of begin again with his sermon, Peace be with you. And so we get on Thomas because he wasn't there. They later tell him, we've seen the Lord. He says, well, unless I see the marks in his hands, the mark in his side, I'm not going to believe. He's not really any different from the rest of the guys. But then a week later, he is there. But notice, these guys have seen the risen Christ. And yet, they're still locked away. Fear is still what governs. And this time, just like last time, Jesus comes into the midst of the locked away place filled with fear. And there in their midst, this time with Thomas, he does the same thing he did the week before. Look and see. And then the promise that he gives. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now in this world in which we're living, it's easy for us sometimes to look back and say, I'd have done things differently. I'm a student of history. I kind of do that all the time. I'll read history and wonder, how could these people back then not have been able to tell uh, what were the logical uh, outcome of what it was that they were doing? And I look back to those disciples and I think, wow, they've seen the risen Christ face to face, been in the room where it happens, right there with him. And yet they're still just locked away, hiding. I'd have done it differently. Would I have, though? See, hindsight often uh, gives us a gift that we don't fully appreciate. These times that we're living in are unlike anything that we've ever faced before. Now, yes, there have been global pandemics before, and yes, people have lived through those. But in terms of our collective memory, we've not been through something like this before. This whole way of having to stay home, stay safe, not gather in groups uh, larger than 50, really, at this point, it's don't gather with anybody outside your immediate household. It's hard to be able to do it. And one of the things that's also true is it puts us in a place of not knowing what comes next, of constantly being unsure, doubting, what the future might hold. Today, our gospel lesson brings us words of comfort. Because it's just in that locked room where Peter, and John, and Thomas, and the rest of them were gathered away, shut away from everything else, ruled by fear and by doubt. Into that space, Jesus came brought peace and hope and gave them the strength to change the world. Now in our places, we're not necessarily locked away under the same kind of fear or anything else, but we're still unsure of what comes next. We're unsure economically. We're unsure uh, just how many things, how the world will be different when we finally come out from this. And it's also terrible watching the death toll rise. And increasingly, there won't be one of us who doesn't know someone 
who's passed away from this horrible disease. But even in the midst of all of this, Jesus comes, bringing peace, bringing hope, and bringing love. It is my sincere hope that together, along with your pastors and vicars and licensed lay ministers, in totally new and different ways that maybe we've never done or tried before, it is my hope that we together be the body of Christ and continue to share those gifts of peace, hope, and love with one another and with the world around us. God's peace to you all.